Hey guys, welcome back to Check Your Living TV and today we're going to be playing a game of Live Free or Die. Now these are a set of rules I came across when I was uh, looking for alternatives uh, to present uh, in my review of British Grenadier. Um, Live Free or Die, like I said, these rules are available from Little War TV and they're, they consist of all of four pages. Um, the quick reference sheet for the rules, that's it, one page. Uh, so these rules are uh, pretty simple, but I'm fairly confident they'll give a good game. They're based on the same genesis as British Grenadiers, uh, British Grenadier, which is Loose Files and American Scramble, which were written by Andy Callum way back in 1987. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about the rules. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a look, link in the description bo below, and by all means, go across to Little Wars TV, and you will find there a playthrough of a complete turn of Live Free or Die. Um, there's also a link later on, uh, uh, I think, to their Patreon page where you can see an entire game played. Um, the rules are pretty well supported in regards to scenarios and the like. The rules themselves, like I said, they're only four pages, uh, but there's also three free scenarios included in the rules, and there's also some design notes and uh, frequent, frequently asked questions. Um, you can also find online uh, uh, optional rules uh, to add a little bit more flavour if that's your thing. Um, the rules recommend playing in 15mm or below uh, and the base size is, is one inch per base and you could have anywhere from four, three or four to up to ten bases per regiment or unit. Um, I'm going to be playing today in 28mm however uh, and my base sizes are 40mm so uh, one inch is approximately 25 and a half um, uh, millimeters and my bases are 40 millimeters. But I'm gonna just play it on a larger table, but I'm not gonna change any of the, the ranges or movement distances um, from those that are suggested in the rules. Now, just to make things a little bit more interesting, however, I'm also gonna make this game somewhat more interactive. So there's gonna be a point where I'm gonna stop playing the game, I'll be playing it solo and I'll stop and then I will open up uh, what do we do next to you, the viewers. So stay to the end of the video, um, and at uh, some point of the game, I'm gonna stop, and then I'm going to say, okay, we've reached a hinge point, and I want you, the viewers, to tell me what the British or the Americans should do next. Hey guys, so this is the table for today's game. It's nine foot long by five foot wide. Um, I'll go through the objectives in a moment, but I'll just point out what some of the, the distinctive features of the table are. Essentially, um, this is the map, and I think the scenario book is called Freedom or Freedom or Death. But um, um, here's the uh, the map for the game. It's called the the scenario is called First Saratoga um, in the scenario book, but it's also the Battle of Freeman's Farm. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, this is uh, Freeman's Farm just here. You've got uh, uh, Coulter's Farm there, and then over yonder is what's known as the mill. There's a stream that goes around the table, uh, well, basically comes in and then hooks into the center of the table. Uh, crossing the stream at any point other than the fords, there's two fords, there's one over there, one there, and a bridge, which does differ slightly from the map. Um, uh, you can cross the stream there, no disruption, as long as you're crossing column. If you cross the stream anywhere else, you pick up a disruption point. Uh, anything other than skirmishes moving through the woods there and here, you pick up a disruption point. There is woods behind this red line here. So where uh, Fraser's brigade enters the table, um, which is one of the British brigades, when they enter the table over here, um, they will all enter with a disruption for, because they've struggled through the woods to get through onto this uh, field of battle. Um, what else is there to tell you? Um, on the map, the stream just ends near the mill. Um, to me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I would think there'd be at least some marshy or boggy ground in this area here. So this area here is uh, rough going. So any troops moving through this area also pick up a point of disruption. Um, the fields, they're just for eye candy. Um, they're just standing crops. There's no problem with that. Really, the only uh, terrain of note is the stream, the woods, the woods here, uh, the two fords, the bridge, 
and obviously the farms and fence lines. Um, okay, let's talk about now the objectives for the scenario before we look at orders of battle. Okay, for the British to secure a major victory, they have to control that road, this road, and this road entry point. Okay, so those three roads. So if they hold that one and that one, but not this one, then it's not a major victory. They can get a minor victory if they hold, if they capture Coulter's Farm and Freeman's Farm um, and inflict more casualties on the Americans than they receive. Any other result is an American victory. So if the Americans can hold just onto this, this road here, they've achieved a major victory. The scenario says um, they, uh, yeah, they have 11 turns to do it, but I'm gonna make it 15 turns because I've increased the size of the table, they're therefore giving more terrain for the Brits to cro uh, get across, but I've not increased their movement rates or their musketry ranges or anything like that. So 15 turns is how long they've got to do it in. Um, on turn two, the British get reinforcements in the form of Fraser's Brigade coming on here. Turn two, uh, Paws Brigade, which is this brigade here, uh, arrives here. Uh, I haven't, I've just put them on the table for the moment, just for convenience sake. Um, from turn six onwards, uh, the Hessians can start arriving on the table and they, they arrive on this table edge here where you can see they're already in their start positions. Um, but they, it, their arrival is randomised, so they need a roll of uh, a five plus from turn six onwards. The British can um, improve that chance by using command points. Um, so spending command point to increase the likelihood of the Germans arriving. So for example, um, I could, I, the, the Brits could add two uh, command points to the, uh, uh, spend it on hastening the arrival of the, the Germans. So instead of arriving on a five or a six, they arrive on a three, four, five or six. Okay. So that's the table, that's the objectives. Now let's just look at the orders of so battle. have a quick look at the American order of battle first. So their advanced guard consists of Morgan's rifles and Dearborn's light infantry. Morgan's are, uh, rifles, they're uh, first class. Uh, so they're elites and Dearborn is second class. Okay, and uh, Morgan's rifles have obviously rifles and both units are must be in skirmish order. Paws Brigade, which is this brigade here, consists of the 1st and 2nd New Hampshire. Um, both of those are second class units, so equivalent to British regulars. So the 1st and 2nd, uh, both have six bases. Um, the 2nd, 4th New York, which are these brown uh, guys here, guys in brown uniforms, uh, they've got seven bases, they're third class. Uh, and then there's the Connecticut Militia, six bases, and their fourth class, and they have a three-pounder gun. And like I said, from turn five onwards, you get uh, Learner's Brigade arriving. Uh, they're uh, the second Massachusetts, this unit here, uh, six bases, and they are second class. Uh, the rest are all third class, which is the ninth Massachusetts, the eighth Massachusetts, and the first Canadians, and they all consist of five bases. Uh, they're commanded by Benedict Arnold. He has a command rating of five with three stars. Possibly or potentially that uh, that uh, five can go up to a maximum of eight command points to spend. Uh, I did mention before about disruption points. In um, uh, Live Free or Die, they're actually called DMZs. So excuse me if I refer to them as disruption points uh, they essentially they mean the same thing. It's the uh, physical and uh, uh, psychological disorder that the units uh, are enduring at the time. So now we'll have a look at the British Order of Battle. Okay, so the first brigade we're going to look at is Hamilton's Brigade. It consists of the 9th Foot. Uh, they're all second class, just so you know. The 9th Foot, the 20th Foot. I'm using the 27th today. I don't have the 20th. Um, but they are the ninth. So the 20th foot, the 21st uh, Fusiliers, uh, the North British Fusiliers, and the 62nd foot. Um, these guys are all uh, second class. 
four bases um, in all the units except for the 20th, they're a six base unit. And they also have three bases of loyalists or Indian scouts, um, so they're there. Okay, and then they have a six pound of field gun with them as well. Uh, there are also uh, two other brigades, Fraser's Brigade, which will be arriving at this point on the table. So just in relation, they basically on the American left um, and on the British right. Uh, that brigade consists of um, uh, grenadiers, which are elites, a light infantry battalion, so converged grenadiers, converged light infantry, five bases for the grenadiers, six bases for the light infantry, seven bases for the 24th foot, which is the uh, a pretty famous regiment. They also have uh, four bases of militia. Uh, these are just loyalists. I put them in red coats. And they also have a grasshopper gun. And potentially from turn six onwards, uh, Rydzell's Brigade, um, which consists of um, uh, Battalion um, Retz, uh, Battalion Specht, and Battalion Rydzell, uh, four, five, and six bases, all third class. They have three skirmishers, uh, three bases of skirmishers that are second class, and a six pounder gun as well. And they arrive, uh, as I've said, over yonder. And uh, potentially uh, they can arrive um, from turn six onwards. Uh, and uh, they have a lieutenant with them um, who uh, adds, I believe, two stars, correct. So two stars, when he arrives, will be added to the pool. Uh, the whole British command uh, is commanded by Lieutenant General John Burgoyne. He has seven command points and potentially uh, two others with two stars. So that's it, we're set to go, and let's crack on from turn one. Okay, we start the game. <clears throat> the first thing we have to do is roll for command uh, command points. Uh, the black dice are um, Benedict Arnold, white is John Burgoyne, five or sixes. So none for Benedict Arnold, uh, and John Burgoyne uh, has got one. Okay, so Benny Arnold's going to give one order to this brigade, the advanced brigade, um, and he's, and the Brits have given one order to um, their brigade as well. Uh, really not much else to do in this turn. Now we'll just roll for initiative. So <coughs> the Yanks, the Americans, the Patriots, they're black. Okay, so the British have the initiative. So after we allocated the uh, command points, the uh, next thing we went on to was uh, charge declarations. Obviously, there were none there, so we went straight into firing. The British six-pounder fired, and to their credit, managed to get one hit on uh, Morgan's rifles. So the next thing in line, uh, in order, is movement. So the British had the initiative, and they moved forward six inches, and they sent their skirmishers into the woods next to the mill. Now it's uh, the Americans' movement. Okay, so the American movement sees uh, Morgan and Dearborn's light infantry move up to the edge of the stream. Okay, so the uh, there's no millets to speak of, so the next thing that we concentrate on is, according to the rules, is redressing um, ranks, and no one can do that. Uh, everyone's too close to enemy to do any uh, uh, unit-initiated redressing of the ranks. So now we're going to go straight on to turn number two. And command dice. One for the British and one for the Americans. So the first thing we do is roll for uh, initiative and the Brits win that with a roll of two to one. Now we go to allocation of command points. Um, the British have eight to use. They've used one on uh, Hamilton's brigade and they've given one to... Uh, their skirmishers because they're over three inches away and the other uh, uh, command point they're going to give to Hamilton's uh, sorry Fraser's brigade that will arrive on their right flank the American command points um, Benny Donald is going to give one to uh, Morgan's rifles he's going to give another one so he can do uh, a rally remove that one DMZ and he's given another command point to Dearborn's light infantry who are over three inches away from Morgan. 
So these are now operating as two independent skirmish screens. Uh, his other command point he will give to uh, Paul's brigade when they arrive to his rear. We're now at the, uh, the conclusion of the movement. We had some firing. Um, these scouts, uh, whilst we're up here, uh, traded uh, shots with uh, Morgan's rifles, inflicted no casualties. In return, there was three um, bases from Morgan's rifles and three bases from Dearborn's infantry that fired, and they got two DMZs on uh, the Indian scouts. Um, to that end, uh, Burgoyne has, in his movement phase, ridden over to uh, remove some uh, DMZs from these guys in the next turn. Um, the Hamilton's brigade has moved up, refusing, refusing their left flank in case they get enveloped by uh, Dearborn. Uh, the gun moved forward, um, and now we have Fraser's brigade arriving. Uh, that's part of the 24th, obviously. The rest of them are still coming on. Uh, we have the Converged Grenadiers, the three-pounder uh, Grasshopper, the Loyalists um, in skirmish formation, because they are, have to skirmish, and the six bases of the British Light Infantry, or the Light Bobs, also skirmishing. And for the American movement, we have Paws Brigade arriving. So the first and second uh, New Hampshire are peeling off to the right, heading towards Coulter's Farm. Six-pounder is on the middle of the road. The uh, second, fourth New York uh, moving up in the centre and the Connecticut militia moving into Freeman's Farm. And now we just do the redress of ranks. Um, these guys are over 12 inches away and they have a leader attached, which is uh, Burgoyne, so they can remove one uh, DMZ. Yeah, obviously, as all these units come through the woods, because this is all wooded, remember, over here, as they come through, they will have DMZs on them. But uh, because the Americans are over 12 inches away, in the redress phrase, they can remove them. So the, the DMZs have been removed from the Grenadiers, the Light Infantry, the uh, Loyalists, and the Little Grasshopper. Um, and that's all... Uh, done for this turn, so let's move on to turn three. So, we always start the, the uh, every turn is start with uh, command dice rolls. Fives and sixes are what we're looking for, nobody got anything. Uh, Benedict Arnold will have uh, five uh, orders to use, and Burgoyne will have seven. So, Benedict Arnold has given an order to uh, Morgan's rifles, he's given one to Dearborn's Light Infantry. He's given one order to the Kinetic Militia because they're over three inches away from the rest of these fellas. He's given one to the remained, uh, to this brigade and that means he has one left over which he can't use and he's not going to use. For the, the British, Burgoyne has given one to this brigade. They're all within three inches so he has, he only needs one to get those guys to do anything. He's given one to the gun, because it's over three inches away from the rest of the brigade. He's given one to the brigade here. And he's given one to um, himself here to do a rally to try and remove that DMZ from those boys, which he will be able to do because they're over 12 inches away. And even though they're only militia, uh, because he's attached to them, he'll be able to remove the DMZ. Okay, so now we go to initiative and then leader actions. Now we roll for initiative. Black is the Americans. It's tied. The Americans have the initiative. So there's no charge declarations, so we're going to go straight into firing. The Americans have the initiative, so they're going to fire first. What we have here is Morgan's rifles. One, two, three. This base he can also shoot through, so that's four bases. Plus, Benedict Arnold has two stars, so he adds two. So that's six shots. Because uh, 10 inches, they can they can uh, use their rifles to good effect. Um, and hitting on fives and sixes. Wow, that is pretty good shooting. One, two, three, four. So that's four hits on the 20th foot. So that's all the shooting for this turn, because no one else is in range. So we're going to move straight on to movement now. But that, uh, that skirmish fire was pretty uh, galling. So at the conclusion of movement, the New Hampshire regiments have moved towards 
uh, Calder's Farm, 2nd 4th New York is moved down the road together with the 3 pounder, the light gun, and the Connecticut Militia are now uh, the garrison for Freeman's Farm. Um, they've changed formation, they pick up, pick up a DMZ for that. Um, for the Brits, uh, they're in a bit of a uh, crappy situation here because if they attempt to move back, that's a movement other than directly forwards, so they'll pick up a DMZ, which would mean they would lose a base. So um, they're stuck there and they're just gonna have to take what comes their way, one more hit and they lose a base. Um, as for um, Fraser's Brigade, uh, all the lights have advanced. Um, so they've gone forward together with the uh, skirmishing loyalists and the 24th is now up uh, in direct support behind the Grenadiers. Uh, the six pounder has moved forward uh, by prolong and other than that uh, they're just going to hold here for the time being. Uh, Burgoyne has left the uh, scouts and is desperately trying to get across to the 20th foot to see if he can help sort those guys out. Uh, now we're on to redressing. Um, uh, they're not over 12 inches away from the enemy, so they cannot remove any shock. Uh, the 24th have come on, um, so they've kept moving through the woods this turn, but it's now the redress phase, so their shock is off. And that means the Connecticut militia normally would be able to remove shock, but because they're class, this uh, fourth class or militia, they cannot remove shock unless a uh, general is attached. Uh, and considering um, Benny Arnold is up here lending his support to the uh, Morgan's Rifles, they're just going to have to hold on to that shock, uh, that DMZ, I should say, for a little bit longer. Yeah, one of the obvious problems with playing so many different rule systems is uh, nomenclature. I keep saying shock in regards to these things. And also, occasionally I'll say DPs. They're shock, DPs, DMZs, they're all the same thing. The little red dots. <laughs> Okay, let's move on uh, to uh, turn four. Okay, it's turn four and we're rolling command dice. Black is uh, the Americans. They've picked up two, so that will take Benedict Arnold up to seven. The Brits have gained none, so they'll be on seven as well. So seven command points each for turn four. So we roll for initiative. And the Brits get the initiative again. So, uh, we've done command points, we've done initiative, leader actions, uh, nothing's changed. Benedict Arnold is remaining with uh, Morgan's Rifles. And then we go to uh, charges. I've allocated command points. Really, you need to see that, basically. Um, that, that's been taken care of. Now, it's going straight to firing. We've fired. Um, the Brits started with the six-pounder, uh, and they got two hits on... Um, the first New Hampshire regiment um, firing simultaneous, but the, obviously the Brits fire first. Um, but I dealt with this one. He fired at the skirmishes, rolled two fours, needing sixes to hit, so nothing there. So that now leaves uh, any other shooting from the Brits, and there's nothing in range. Same, same for everybody else except for Morgan's rifles. Uh, so they've got six shots because they've got four bases that can shoot at the 20th, and they've got two stars with Benedict Arnold. So this is pretty dangerous stuff now for um, the 20th foot. And uh, if they take as much as one DMZ, they're gonna lose a base because they're on four. Uh, needing fives and sixes on six dice, it's not looking good. Uh, and it's not two hits. So that's one base gone. That's going to trigger morale test and we'll leave them with one DMZ. That'll be the fifth one. Uh, so the, a base is removed. They then uh, remove all the DMZs, but this one gives them another one. So they've lost a base and they're still carrying one DMZ and they'll have to do a morale check. Now, because they're second class, they get three dice uh, and they need a five or six on one to pass. So they should pass this, <laughs> but they don't. So they suffer a retreat. Um, 
So they're going to go back six inches. The closest unit uh, that's the same class or below automatically picks up three DMZs uh, themselves. So this is this has really gone to poo for the Brits. Okay, so um, when you retreat, you can go uh, anywhere in a 45 degree arc to the rear. Uh, so the 20th foot, uh, we they lost the base. We took the base from the, the most advantageous position. So we took it from their left uh, and then they went back 45 degrees, six inches, and they ended up here. If they'd gone straight back, they would have impacted with them and that would have caused a DMZ on these guys and one on them. So as it is, they've lost the base and they're carrying one DMZ from the shooting. The 21st, because they're equal uh, uh, status uh, to these guys, um, they then pick up three DMZs for seeing friends retreat. Uh, and so that's the result of the firing done now. We're moving straight on to movement. British have the initiatives. They'll move first, but suffice to say, um, the advance guard consisting of Morgan's rifles and Dearborn's light infantry have been a real pain in the butt for Hamilton's brigade, who's... Uh, whose advance uh, in this area here has really just come to a grinding halt. Uh, and it looks like Burgoyne has a lot of work cut out now uh, <laughs> to sort of like sort out, um, sort out uh, some uh, rallying. But let's go on a movement. Okay, so cracking on with the movement. What we see here is the, uh, the 24th foot is passing through the Grenadiers. Um, the reason for that will become apparent later, but both will pick up one disruption for the inner penetration. Uh, so that was that taken care of. The Loyalists, they're moving off to the right because they want to try to outflank uh, the Americans and start working their, the, their flank. Uh, and the British lights, these elite lights, they're going to move into Coulter's farm. They've got the drop on these uh, Americans, so they're going to move into the farm. And they don't pick up any disruption because they're skirmishers. So they've, they've moved in and uh, they're basically uh, garrisoning a, the Coulter's farm. And now let's have a look at the American movement. Okay, so the second New Hampshire, they've uh, changed from column into line and they're refusing the flank of the American uh, brigade, essentially. They're covering off to make sure that they don't get enveloped by these skirmishers. At the same time, uh, the first New Hampshire, they're going to form line uh, directly in front of Corpus Farm. Obviously, they're going to want to take that farm, so they're going to prepare for an assault. Uh, they change formation, so they pick up a, uh, a demoralization for that. Um, at the same time, second, fourth, New York, they're going to form line. Uh, they're going to be the first ball walk against any aggression by the Brits towards Freeman's Farm. They don't they can't trust the, uh, the Connecticut um, militia to hold that farm. Um, and Dearborn, uh, sorry, Morgan's Light Infantry, or Morgan's Rifles, I should say, they're moving to their left, uh, shuffling across, trying to link up with the rest of the brigade that's come up, which is Porsche Brigade, obviously. Uh, Fraser, uh, sorry, um, you can see here also I've attached uh, Burgoyne to the 21st Fusiliers and finally Dearborn's Light Infantry are also shuffling across to their left and that concludes movement. So the next thing that happens is if there had been any uh, charges you would do Malay res uh, resolution here so now we're simply removing shock uh, sorry removing DMZs uh, but only units that are outside 12 inches of enemy can do so these chaps cannot do so these guys can't these guys can't they're fourth grade, so they can't do it, or fourth class, so they can't do it themselves. Um, that just leaves these guys here. They're all outside 12 inches. So they've done their passage of lines, and now their officers are redressing their ranks. These guys are 12 inches away. They can remove any kind of uh, shock that they, uh, DMCs they have. Uh, these guys can't because they're within 12 um, so in the next turn, fortunately, Burgoyne's here and he'll be able to remove two. So that's, that's not too bad. Okay, so that ends turn four. So now we're going to move on to turn five. Okay, so we're going to hold it right there now because what we've reached uh, uh, what we call a hinge point in the game. Uh, it's turn five and Learner's Brigade is arriving on the field for the Americans. And in the following turn, turn six, the Hessians could arrive on the field as well, potentially. 
So with that in mind, what I'd like from you guys is to send me courses of action for both uh, Americans and or British that you choose. Um, there's an email address in the description on, in below. Just fire, fire off to me your suggestions or you can even put it in the comments of this video um, what you think uh, the Americans or the British should do. So pick a side, come up with a course of action, pop it in the comments below and um, I'll just randomly pick one and um, we'll take it from there. So we're going to wrap it up now um, and uh, in part two we're going to play the battle to its conclusion using the courses of action suggested by you the viewers. And at the end of that, I'll give a brief summary of what I think of Live Free or Die. So until then, uh, what happens now, uh, next is it's up to you. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing from you. And uh, until then, give a quick.